In the past four to five years, Deloitte Australia has broadened the collaborative work it undertakes with colleagues in India. To get a better understanding of the benefits and challenges from this collaboration, I spoke with Vasu Sharambas, who has been on secondment in Sydney for nearly a year, and Kathy Fu, who recently spent a month in Hyderabad. Kathy and Vasu, welcome to the report. Happy to be here. Uh, so Kathy, any surprises from working in Hyderabad? Absolutely. So one of the great things that I learned about was the way they talk about food. So food gets uh, put into two categories. We call them veg and non-veg. Um, and then we find that there's different degrees of being veg and non-veg. For example, you have pure veg, which I would assume to be vegan. And then you also have pure non-veg and pure, pure non-veg. One thing in uh, working in Australia is that uh, there's no challenge which cannot be overcome over a coffee. Yeah. So I think big coffee drinkers and a lot of uh, uh, challenges, problems, issues, solutions are over a coffee table. There'll be a lot of cafes out there happy to hear you say that. <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> Deloitte has four offices in India and, and Hyderabad has what? 20,000 people? 20,000. Okay. Yeah. And, and some of the people working there are not necessarily Indian. They could be from Canada, the States and so on. So what are, what are the benefits you saw and being in that environment? I think there's a great opportunity to network with different people from around the firm um, and around the globe. So I got to meet people from Deloitte Belgium, Deloitte Canada, Deloitte US. Um, so it's this fantastic opportunity to be able to meet other people and see how they do things in their end of the world. Well, so I'm fascinated because you have a lot of experience, despite your quiet nature, with the, with the Americans and other, other parts of the world. How do we differ? How do Australians differ? Uh, I think uh, one of the seven signals is talk straight. Uh, it brings a lot of things onto the table up front and uh, it, it helps in creating a very, very uh, congenial work atmosphere. But there's talking straight and not being, and also having to be aware of things. I think you both mentioned that there's someone who worked hard, really hard, and they got an email saying thank you. And their reaction was, we haven't done enough. So do we, do we in Sydney need to be, or sorry, in Australia, need to be more aware of that, that reaction? So I think uh, what works really well is people take time because they're uh, 10,000 miles away and, and it needs a little more appreciation and the feedback really goes a long way. Uh, one example I can give is that there was a big project the Hyderabad team was working on and uh, the team worked very hard over the weekend and they delivered the project and uh, mm. they got an email back saying that thank you two words. When you look at an email, uh, it's a thank you. So people back in the EDC team says, are they happy and thank you? Not so happy and thank you. Very happy and thank you. So let's look at working together. When I, or when anyone, sends an assignment to, to a Hyderabad, do people there automatically feel they must do it straight away? Is, is there a, a cultural tendency to do that? Well, one thing I've noticed is that there's um, uh, an obligation to do the work. So in India, it's a very much a privilege to be asked. So they will prioritise that work over anything else that they do and they will go above and beyond and do the extra mile to make sure that they do that unless you actually give them a time frame and say, I don't need this urgently, you can take a week to do this. And, and, and what's, so what can the, the, off, the different officers do? What, what is being done so that you, we, it becomes as familiar as the three of us talking here. Uh, one thing is to accept that there are going to be differences. So you were just mentioning about a certain case where an email goes, thank you, or just no worries. Uh, it's taken literally, no worries is, is don't worry, whereas it means thank you. So I think understanding those similarities and being a little more explicit in, in sharing what you actually mean would help build the relationship. One thing I noticed was the, as you mentioned, no worries. And one thing that we do in English quite uh, subconsciously is we uh, frame our language in a very negative way. So we say things like, no worries, how are you, not bad. And you imply the opposite when you say that sort of thing. So um, it's, it's, very, it's very negative framing. Whereas in Indian culture, everything's very positively worded. Um, one of the things that I noticed was, um, well, my favourite one is when you, we, we call it a sick bay, and in India they call it a healing room. So it's very positively framed. Can I ask both of you, um, you work for Deloitte, 
uh, the largest professional service firm in the world, has the opportunity to work overseas been a, a critical part in, in your career development? Has it made your working life different? I think this is, this is absolutely fantastic. Uh, it expands your horizons. Uh, it gives you a great opportunity to, to be in one organization but still get exposed to multiple uh, cultures. And Kathy, you, yeah. you're new to this. I agree. I think it's really important for everyone to be able to learn a little bit more about what other people are doing in their corner of the globe. And I highly recommend anyone and everyone take a rotation to, to somewhere in the world. Kathy and Vasu, thanks for a very interesting discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Kathy.